Okay, hey, Dan Sullivan again. And this video has a special purpose. Um, I've been catching some grief and um, some criticism from people who think I'm being a little too aggressive trying to sell the Load Pro, uh, which is the tool that I invented and patented. And what I've decided to do is to finally, and I suppose I should have done this sooner, I'm going to do a head to head comparison. I've got the Load Pro and I've got the Volt Pro from Hickok Wacon, and I've got the Power Probe, in this case the Power Probe 3. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to artificially corrode the main power wire to the Cummins engine in here. My contention is that the two electronic tools, the Power Probe and the Volt Pro, do not have the resolution required to do the type of test that this requires to get an answer that's actually meaningful. My experiments with the two tools prove to me that they continue to show normal voltages through high resistances. Now the Volt Pro is a little different because it does have a load uh, circuit loading feature, which is the point of my concern about whether or not Wacon is infringing on my patent, which is another story, but it's still being written. And these electronic tools cannot dissipate a lot of heat. Our tool does. So naturally, mathematically, and practically, we get a better answer. So um, enough talking. Let's get this thing exposed, and uh, let's get started. One of the things that uh, I've said about the differences between the Load Pro, the Volt Pro, and the Power Probe is that the voltmeter is completely independent of any type of exterior power source. You don't have to plug it in to a battery to make it work. These two tools, the Volt Pro and Power Probe, they do what they do, but one of the things that you have to deal with, especially working on larger vehicles, is there's a wire connecting them to the battery which limits your range of motion. So let me, uh, let me demonstrate this just real briefly and uh, then we'll move on to something else. Okay, the Volt Pro stops here. Power Probe stops here. Um, but I have to say, to be honest, that they have an extension. Okay, uh, apparently for large trucks and heavy equipment. But even if you have a long extension, you're still tied to the battery. Well, let me show you the uh, extent of the voltmeter's range of motion. It's all the way down here! All right, let me describe the experiment here. A lot of people have complained to me saying that I don't provide enough specifics about the tools that I'm finding fault with and I'm overselling the Load Pro and trying to make it out to be more than it is. And that's not the case. I've said it forever. Uh, the Load Pro does one thing. It loads the circuit and it uses voltage drops, which are well understood. It just does it really, really fast and it eliminates the need to think about it. You just do it and it prevents the need to predict an answer. So um, what we're going to do here is I'm going to put a fault in the engine ECM power. And I'm going to go to the fuse in the battery box and I'm going to install a rheostat. And this rheostat goes from zero to about 250 ohms. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the ECM through this switch and then I'm going to flip the switch, which is going to run the ECM through the rheostat. I'm going to start at zero ohms, and the engine should continue running fine. And then I'm going to very slowly increase resistance, which, if everybody remembers their ohms law, should make current go down. Well, it also causes a drop in voltage. So there's going to be a voltage drop across this resistor. Well, I'm also going to have a voltmeter hooked up. So we'll be able to watch me increase resistance. You'll be able to watch the voltage over the rheostat, we subtract that from 14 and that'll give us the voltage of the ECM. When the engine first begins to misbehave, 
and start doing something that it shouldn't do, whatever that setting is, I'm going to stop and we're going to figure out how much resistance that is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the connector with all three tools and I'm going to test the same connection with the same resistance with all three tools and demonstrate to you why I think the Load Pro is better. Um, I realize people will say that I'm biased. Of course I'm biased. I've been working on it for 13 years and I'm the guy that did it. But some people have questioned my integrity, which is a little frustrating, but I understand it. But I don't lie. And if I didn't in my heart believe that this was a better tool, I assure you the last 13 years would not have been spent doing what I've been doing, dealing with what I've been dealing with, getting to this point where I have to argue that I didn't waste the 13 years. So the whole point of this is this. It's my contention that the power probe and the volt probe, while having some value, do not have the resolution you need to see a problem that's small enough to cause this engine to fail. So it's a question of being able to use the tool in all cases, and not just some cases. So this experiment should prove once and for all what I've been saying about the Load Pro and its connection to the voltmeter making it completely mobile and its resolution makes it possible to see even as little as two to three ohms for a person who gets skilled in using it. So this is what the experiment's gonna be. Let's do it. I want you guys to be able to see how little it takes to make this happen. I've got the meter set on max, so it's recording the maximum numbers. I've gotten some different numbers, and I've done this about five times, and I'm getting an average, but I'm filming this so you can see what I'm doing, and hopefully um, we'll get a number that kind of makes sense. Now, it doesn't take a lot. Okay, it doesn't take a lot, so you kind of got to watch carefully. Okay, the meter is showing 3.63 volts. I recorded it on the max setting, so engine shut down, um, and that's where the voltage drop, uh, that's where the voltage drop occurred. And if I unplug this, and then um, just turn the meter on ohms, because it's all hooked together, uh, then I get 4.9 ohms. All right, now the last time I got 6.7, the first time I got 5, then I got 4.3, then I got 5.2, and now I got 4.9. So I'm, I want to pick a number, and I'm just going to say 5, because, okay, that's pretty much what I got. All right, uh, first tool up is going to be the Power Probe 3. Um, notice the lights are on, right? Uh, the lights are on. Um, there's no reading on the meter, and factually the uh, voltmeter right now would be showing you ghost voltage as the numbers jumping around. That would mean open circuit. So there's no reading here if you're not connected to a circuit. So that's not available. Uh, it also has this really, really sharp point, um, which makes it very easy for people to assume that poking holes in wires is good. And more importantly though, from a diagnostic perspective, this point will go right through a thousandth of an inch of corrosion and you miss the problem. Okay, so say what you will, sharp points are bad, okay, and I'm quite frankly surprised that we still make tools with them. Okay, main power wire, let's see what we get. Uh, 12.3 with a red light and a beep. Okay, now this tool cannot load the circuit. Um, at least not the way mine does, and it doesn't give you the same information. But um, remember, we've got about five ohms of corrosion in the uh, in the circuit right now, and this this tool is not seeing it. Okay, so there's the power probe. 
Okay, um, here's the, let me pull back so you can see it. There's the Volt Pro. This is the tool that I'm contending is using my circuit um, because anybody who understands electricity knows that the only way to get a voltage drop is to read a, a voltage across a resistor with current flowing through it. So uh, I think I need to get a solid blue light. Okay. Now notice it's giving me 11.8, but I know the voltage is 12.3, so that number is not correct. Um, and a person looking at that might say, oh, my battery's low, because they don't know that this tool is giving them a number that's actually uh, uh, lower than it should be. Now it's actually dropping down to 10. Okay, so I'm just showing you what it does, okay? I, you know, I, I know enough people who would look at that and go, oh, my battery's low, right? So that's something to be cautious of. All right, now let me see if I can do this here so you can see it. Okay. So you can see, oop, doggone it. Here we go. I'm going to have to do it upside down, guys. Uh, maybe 12.2. Now, this is the loaded feature right now. It's the feature that loads the circuit, which is theoretically supposed to be giving you an answer that you can use. And this number seen by anybody, measured by anybody, would more than likely assume that 12.2 is okay because the original voltage was only 12.6. The fact that the voltage went up from 10 to 12.2 might confuse people. Um, that's obviously just an aberration to the tool. But the loaded voltage on this tool is 12.2. Okay. But here's the deal. If these leads are not touching, the meter jumps around and that's what I call ghost voltage. Well, that means you have an open circuit because notice the leads are open and they're not touching. There's no voltage present. So if you stick the meter into the circuit looking for voltage and see that, it immediately means you have an open. That's, that's the answer. You're done. That's it. Okay? Some people think their meter's broken. The other reading that I use is straight zeros. And you'll notice that if I put the leads together, I can bump them around everywhere, anywhere, but I still get straight zeros. Well, that's because copper is touching steel and that means we have a short to ground. So this would be an open, and this would be a short to ground, and that's how you would identify those two faults, okay? But then there's another way to know that you don't have them. <clears throat> because if I stick my load probe directly into the, re uh, to the connector, okay? Notice I'm getting full system voltage. <clears throat> well, that means I don't have an open or short, okay? And manufacturers don't teach us that either. Uh, they want us to jump through all these hoops with jumper wires and whatever. But the reality is, if you see system voltage, you don't have an open or short. Okay? Uh, you rule those two out, and you're done. But then the third step is to simply push the button. And when you do, the voltage drops down, in this case, to 9.67. And the 9.67 volts means that there's a problem in the circuit, period. And because I have both leads in the connector, that means I'm testing 100% of the system, of the circuit, with one test. I don't have to move my lead, I don't have to move, move my little tool thing to another pin. Um, I'm checking the positive and the negative at the same time. One test. One, one, one test. Okay? Um, I guess one and a half if you figure pushing the button, but whatever. Okay? So, what's the next step? Well, all I know is that I've got corrosion in the circuit somewhere, but I don't know where. So, what am I going to do? Well, what I'm going to do is move the black lead to a good machine ground. Emphasis on good. And uh, I'm going to push the button again. And when I push the button again, the problem comes back. OK? That means the problem's in the positive. So I now know I have a fault caused by high resistance in the positive wire. And I'm done diagnosing. Now all I have to do is go find it. So. Let me zoom out and show you the entire process in real time, and uh, you can uh, make up your own mind as to whether or not this tool works the way I advertise it to um, or not. Okay. Here is the real-time diagnostic for the ECM main power circuit to determine whether or not the circuit has a fault that's electrical. Not only will I be able to tell you if it has a fault, I'll be able to tell you what the fault is, and I'll be able to tell you what wire the fault is in by simply reading voltage and pushing a button. Ready? 
Start your stopwatch. Go. Meters on volts. Remove the ECM power plug. Plug it into the two pins. Full system voltage, no opens or shorts. Load the circuit. Drops to 9.67. Moves the black lead to ground. Repeat the test. Drops to 9.67. I have a corroded positive wire. What's the problem? Um, I wasn't kidding. It really does work. Throw the ghost and zero voltage in and man, you got a heck of a diagnostic method. And because I'm a teacher first and a bad salesman second, I've been continually frustrated because people find it easier to think of me as a tool salesman because you get to treat them like crap. But people tend to ignore the fact that I've got 30 years of experience in the field. I, I earned these patches. Any of you guys who criticize me for chasing the American dream and then getting upset because somebody might be stealing my patent, you don't understand the problem. I've never lied about this tool. I've never tried to suggest that it does anything more than it does. I have demoed this tool or sent this tool to around 200 engineers at about 40 companies uh, in the last 13 years. Three companies have adopted the tool. Caterpillar, Volvo, and um, UPS. A lot of other companies use it, but those three companies have adopted it. They have part numbers for it, so that's credibility. As much as I hate to sound like I'm slamming, uh, I don't think any company that large will ever give a part number to a tool with a sharp point, because they have enough sense to understand that they don't want people out there in the field using those tools. And I think everybody understands why. That's all I got. I'm done. That's what the tool does. That's what those tools do. As I said, they do not have anywhere near the wattage dissipation to actually get a reasonable reading. Because on five ohms, they all showed normal. But on five ohms, this dropped almost three volts. That's a distinct difference that could mean the difference between being out there for 10 minutes and being out there for 10 hours. You decide which one of those you'd prefer to do. I uh, was working on a bus, had a fan switch, it evidently had went bad, but we couldn't find it because using regular leads it showed it that on dial, showed no resistance through the wires. Had a four hour standard repair time. With your leads I used, I pushed a button on it and it showed all the resistance that was in it that the standard lead would. I don't know what's in it, it makes it work, but it does. Okay.